Welcome to World of Warships Legends. I found out this was on Xbox so I had to install it after having 130 hours played on Steam and however many directly through the Wargaming launcher. I put a few hours into this and so far it just feels like a lazy console port that's trying to be used as a cash cow. Don't get me wrong, I love the game but they have so many microtransactions it's kind of irritating. It's been out for less than two weeks at the time of recording this and it's in game preview but that doesn't guarantee anything will be added to the game or anything will be changed, so who knows what's going to happen with it. The biggest letdown so far are the fact that ships are missing their final three tiers. All ships in the game cap at tier 7, so you won't see a Yamato or anything like that on console, at least for the time being. And if you're a cruiser player, then I would steer clear of the Brits as their cruisers cap at tier 3. And they're the only nation in the game to do so out of the three available nations, being the Americans, Japanese and British. There's no aircraft carriers at all in the game at the moment and I love using carriers from time to time even if it's just to annoy the battleships dropping torps from the sky. There's 8 player levels in the whole game at the moment but they're easy to reach and they'll unlock your commanders, campaigns and camos fairly quick. Along the lines of camos, from what I've seen there is a total of 4 camos to equip on your ship. Campaigns will give you some nice boosts, commanders will help your ships when you level them up and the store does have a free container. There will more than likely be 20k credits and 50 doubloons. Also, there's a thank you bundle that will give you 100k credits and some other cool bits. After playing for a few hours, I have managed to obtain 400 doubloons and have 5 days of premium, so microtransactions aren't at all necessary at this point. Getting into the gameplay, I know the controls will be different as there's a limited amount of options on a controller, so the game is missing things like rudder lock, but a lot of the important things that are vital for victory are still in the game, and although there's less controls, that actually makes it easier to get used to the game for players that are new. Personally, I think the alt look, known on Xbox as the overview camera, which is left bumper, needs work, because it does give you the ability to lock your turrets whilst you look around, but you have to manually go back to your previous angle, or the turrets will begin to rotate, and it could be done so much easier to automatically put you in your previous view. There's a very small amount of maps to play on, and I know they change in the PC version as you progress through the tiers because you'll eventually need more distance, as your ship's guns can fire at a greater range, but I'm not 100% sure yet if that will work like that on Xbox. And that's pretty much it for the review, but there's a couple of things quickly that I'd like to throw in before we wrap it up. The real money bundles in this game increase in price up to £70 for the Ultimate Edition, and in the game's current development stage it's 100% not worth it because of the lack of content, and maybe that's just due to it being a game preview, but I think that's ridiculous, and also the amount of content they could have ported over from the PC version makes that £70 edition even more pointless. If you don't like microtransactions, however, then you can fully enjoy the game without them, and it's free to play, so there's no complaints there. But if you want some premium ships to boost your XP and jump into a higher tier without needing to grind, then forget about it. There is five premium ships in total in the game so far, and they cap at tier four, which you will more than likely reach in a few hours if you get the hang of the game and understand its mechanics. So that is the end of the review, and kind of my first impressions. I hope it was understandable. As much as I love playing this game, I really feel it's leaning towards being an attempt at abusing real money bundle purchases, but with it being in the game preview means there's a big possibility of improvements and new content being implemented, and I want to know what your thoughts are, so leave them in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.